Very happy about that. I think with that, we are going to jump into our integration discussion here. It's on Nextcloud. Uh, you have groupware and settings listed. I want to make the correction now and say it. it's settings we're going over in, I guess it's, um, uh, what do you want to call it, embedded applications or what kind of what comes out of the box? It's not any of the third-party apps or apps by Nextcloud. It's kind of like what I think of as uh, the photo viewer, the PDF viewer. I think I, I put editing documents in there i don't know if that is part of that suite or not that's uh embedded i think there's a music player so it's it's all the built-in applications and and it's 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 everything that comes with the vanilla next cloud install without having to install anything additional any kind of yeah so so i'm going to go through those and then i'm going to go through the settings as they exist on a vanilla install uh, stuff to okay. tweak, stuff to yeah. be aware of, uh, stuff to look over. Uh, now, I did want to to take a second. This being the the twentieth episode, right? I I wanted to to kind of re go over uh, something that that I stole. Uh, that's called the ten episode challenge, uh, which is go back and listen to the last ten episodes uh, of what you're doing, uh, and then you would be in a prime place to jump in to, to see what we're doing here. Right. And, and this might even be, you know, something like a, a five episode challenge because all the news items that we're covering build on each other. Uh, all of the, the services, like we, we talked about next cloud in the previous episode. Right. And before that we had gone through Canboard, and Canboard took 10 episodes. Yeah. I might even recommend just going through all the Canboard episodes just to catch it, just to kind of catch up, just to, go through and understand how we're doing this so at least understand the structure exactly and that is something that we have fixed or, or that will be coming out as, as fixed on the updated version on monday right so as we're we're rolling out a couple new features to the site we're going to be grouping all the camboard episodes together right we're going to be grouping all the next cloud episodes together so you're going to be able to go through those and you're going to be able to start at the beginning and say all right what was the first you know episode that they talked about next cloud and uh i think that was actually the very first episode that the shebang. it was yeah yeah it was yeah so we we kind of introduced the concept of us hosting a next cloud instance in the very first episode and we are circling back to it and we're going to dive in depth for the next Oh man, it could it could easily be ten episodes that we touch on the different aspects of Nextcloud and and going over the different uh, things that you can do with it, the different setups, the different considerations. Uh, but right now uh, we're we're just starting off, so we'll we'll see where this takes us. And this episode specifically, the second in this series, is going to go through built-in applications and the settings. Uh, so without further me talking, uh, let's go ahead and and see what we have here. Uh, so the, the built-in applications uh, in Nextcloud, the m majority of the functionality is an app, quote-unquote. Uh, there are many apps that come pre-installed and pre-configured. Uh, as an administrator, you can find them under the apps menu in any view in, in Nextcloud. Uh, note that starting with Nextcloud 20, the default homepage is the application dashboard instead of the files application. And that's what I was alluding to earlier. Uh, and I do have a link in the linked show notes or the link, excuse me, the linked documentation has a, has a link to Nextcloud's dashboard documentation where you can find out more about how that's supposed to work and how to set that up and how to configure it. I, I would assume we're going to go through that uh, one of these days, I, probably when we're more familiar with it, as this is a feature that is fairly new and has just been rolled out. So I haven't really had a, a good chance to play with it yet, uh, but I would be interested in diving in there sooner or later to see what we can do with it. Uh, now, I have a list of applications here that are built in. Uh, and I have them listed simply in in uh, alphabetical order, and I, I have them listed here to make users aware of the functionality that is bundled in with a default Nextcloud install. So right out of the box, this is what you're getting, and and here are some to be aware of. This is no means by no means comprehensive. This is simply an overview of of the most important ones that you're going to have available to you. Uh, so the first one is going to be activity. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go through the summary of what activity is. So 
This application enables users to view actions related to their files in Nextcloud. Once enabled, users will see a new icon activity in their apps menu. When clicked, a new page appears for users to track the activity related to files, from new files to deleted files, moving, renaming, updating, and any sharing activity that occurs. The user can configure their individual activity settings in their personal menu. This sets the type of activity to record, as well as whether the user sees their own activities, whether these are only available offline, and whether they get an email digest on a regular basis. More on that later. Uh, and then you have the documentation linked to that. Uh, so that's going to be anything, I mean, as, as I just said, that's going to be anything that you're doing. Nextcloud is going to show you basically a, a, a history of what has been done, what files uploaded, uh, what files uh, have been moved, renamed, updated, or shared. There's not much to add on that one. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's quite literally at the activity, what's going on in Nextcloud. All right, so I, I got a couple more here, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna run run through these. If you have anything to comment on or, or something anecdotally, just go ahead and jump in. Uh, the next the next application here is comments, uh, and this is this is probably the most succinct description of all of the ones that is, are listed here and it says it's a file app plugin to add comments to files i don't necessarily use it that often but i can imagine if you know we're starting to share files back and forth if i wanted to put a little note on something it's nice to know that it, that's built in there now there's there's a thing about where do you go to do your communication like and and communication i always consider to be a an aspect of data ingest. So like if I'm getting communication via email, if I'm getting communication via net can board, if I'm getting communication via uh, matrix, right? I want to keep those limited. So I'm not trying to data ingest from 500 different places, right? Especially if, right. if you're making a comment in next cloud and I don't check that for a week and a half, but I got email open, I got matrix open, right? What are our, known forms of communication like what what have we agreed right. to to have as our primary mode of communication not next slide comments i'll tell you that uh but if if need be that is there um so so just note that jack if you make a comment on a next slide file, i'm probably not going to check it i'm probably not going to see it <laughs> i think of uh media i think for media for comments that's what i go to i don't i don't think of it as a communications method for shoot hey I need you to review this document. No, I would send you a ping in Matrix. I'd be like, hey, you know, check this out. Or I'd put it, if it was a file related to a task, which guess what? Most of them are. I would put in the, I would put in the task because I know that's where you're going to look. You're not going to look on the file for comments on the file. Exactly, exactly. Uh, but if you want to remind yourself for something, feel free to, free to go ahead. Just note that I'm not going to be reading it. Uh, the next plugin here we have is deleted files. Uh, this application enables users to restore files that were deleted from the system. It displays a list of deleted files in the web interface and has options to restore those deleted files back to users' file directories or remove them permanently from the system. Restoring a file also restores related file versions if the versions application is enabled. When a file is deleted from a share, it can be restored in the same manner, though it is no longer shared. By default, these files remain in the trash bin for 30 days. To prevent a user from running out of disk space, the deleted files app will not utilize more than 50% of the currently available free quota for deleted files. If the deleted files exceed this limit, the app deletes the oldest files until it gets below this limit. And then uh, they also have documentation linked there. Now this is interesting. Uh, I guess for a compliance standpoint, but for me more so from a disk utilization standpoint to know that the deleted files are not actually deleted when they're deleted, but they take 30 days. They're placed in what amounts to a, a trash, like a trash bin, like you would have on your computer that you would have to manually go and, and delete. But in this case, does it every 30 days um, or well times, times the file out after 30 days means that space right. is actually still being consumed until that file is deleted, until those 30 days are up. Uh, now, it can be manually gone out and deleted, or if it gets above 50% of the available free quota, it will start pruning, which is a, a very sane default 
for me, actually. I'm I'm very okay with that. And I believe there are corresponding settings where you can tweak that to say I want it to expire earlier or I want it to take up less less or more disk space uh, in, in the trash. Uh, but it it is interesting that on the surface, it looks like you may have deleted a file, but you actually have thrown it into the trash bin where it will sit for approximately the next 30 days before it gets removed. So in in case you delete something, you should always have a restore available to you. Now, our backups uh, do keep snapshots of the file in case you delete something and it's been past 30 days. Uh, We have, we keep long lived backups. backups. Yeah. Yeah. Now it would, we would have to, to check to see at what time frame that backup occurred. And you know, it, it, it's a good chance though that that file is enabled on the system unless you put it in there and immediately deleted it. But we we should have at least some remediation there uh, to, to go back and, and examine to see if we can't cherry pick that file back from, from one of our uh, R Compose backups. Uh, the next application here uh, that I wanted to highlight is file sharing. So this application enables users to share files within Nextcloud. If enabled, the admin can choose which groups can share files. The applicable users can then share files and folders with other groups and users within Nextcloud. In addition, if the admin enables the share link feature, an external link can be used to share files with other users outside of Nextcloud. Admins can also enforce passwords, expiration dates, and enable server-to-server sharing via share links the federated sharing, as well as sharing from mobile devices. Turning the feature off removes shared files and folders on the server for all shared recipients and also on the sync clients and mobile apps. Uh, And as well, I have linked documentation here. Uh, This is probably what I use Nextcloud for the most. Uh, This is what I use when I need to have my uncle upload my cousin's wedding videos. Uh, I I tell him here is a share link that is upload only. Uh, Go ahead and upload all of the files that you have into this link and then I will have them to use them and and, and edit them. Um, This is what I use when I need to provide tax documentation uh, to accountant agencies where I say, all right, here is the link Um, I have previously given you a password because I would password protect that share and using that password, they can go retrieve that publicly. So, so I think that is, that is my most beneficial way that I use Nextcloud. That, that helps me out the most is just having that you need files that I have that are too big for email. What do now? Right. I like that one. Yeah. Because I think, I don't know what the limit is uh, for emails at 30 meg, 5 meg. It depends on your email provider, but it is somewhere close to 30 meg. Yeah. So it's definitely a lot easier to just, and especially with that, you're also getting, you can just send one link versus attaching however many files. You know, say there wasn't a limit via email. It's like, well, now you have kind of a, not a permanent home, but more or less a permanent place for these files to be stored and for whoever needs to get them. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm, I've been very happy with that. Obviously, that also enables uh, federated sharing and it enables uh, user-to-user sharing within that Nextcloud instance. Uh, so plenty of other things uh, to touch on too. I think I'm going to leave off the federation uh, sharing and I know we talked about user-to-user sharing in the previous episode. So I'll just, I'll leave that at that uh, and continue on. Uh, I do have, I think it's, six more applications. So I'm going to try to run through these real quick and then we'll get to settings and and move on here. The PDF reader application is the next application on the list of ones I wanted to highlight. Uh, So this application enables, integrates the PDF.js library into Nextcloud. Using this application, users can view their PDF files online without the need to download the file. When this application is enabled, publicly shared PDF documents also get shown in the PDF viewer instead of only showing a single static snapshot of the document. The PDF viewer requires a modern browser, does not work with Microsoft Internet Explorer versions below 9, which no one should be using anyways. I was going to (laughs) say. 
So hopefully, hopefully that limitation is not something you're concerned about. If you are, find help. Find help. Um, PDF.js is a JavaScript library developed by Mozilla. You can learn more about PDF Project at their homepage there. Uh, so real quick, we all know what a PDF is and how to see it in a browser. This is enabled by default. So if you're expecting to be able to read PDF files in Nextcloud, that feature is already there. Like I said, a lot of these yep. are, are built in. A lot of them are functionality you would expect to see. It's just the way Nextcloud structures their plugin architecture, their their application architecture. These are all modular components of the system. And I wanted to highlight them as we go down uh, to, to show the functionality that is available on a vanilla system. Yeah, and I really like that you highlighted that it's because in that you specifically that you attach the GitHub link to the project, um, at least for most of these built-in ones, because I was I thought it was kind of developed as one monolith, mon, one monolith, essentially. Knowing that it's split and spread apart, and that you have different plugin, different, uh, what do you want to call it? Core features, built-in Appli- yeah. features, yeah, just like the application features, they're modular it boils down to their module you know you can switch it out if you don't like it it's not you don't have to remaster the entire code base you just kind of have to know one piece of it exactly exactly so you can you can swap these out and uh, as i'm sure we're going to find out next week you can install others so uh the next one to touch on is photos this one actually doesn't have a paragraph written about it they they simply have bullet points um with emojis so as as much as we love as much as we love pictures, different developer stuff probably. On here. Oh yeah, no, a completely different team. I'm sure uh, decided to to take the uh, the the bullet point uh, route here. The emoji route. Emoji route. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Uh, photos. Um, this application actually I know has was was recently reworked. Uh, there was there was a whole bunch of backend op- optimization done, uh, which led to a couple of headaches because there was a feature re- regression um, where there were were features that were not implemented in the new one that uh, you know were were available in the old one. Uh, I haven't checked on those recently, so I'll have to I'll have to see where they are currently. But it does come with a vanilla install. Um, it has, you know, its highlights are that it's a beautiful photo and video timeline uh, available. Uh, it supports favorites and tagging, like tagging photos. Uh, my favorite feature, uh, you can link directly to a side slideshow and, and, and easily share that. So you can, you can simply share a slideshow. Try saying that three times fast. And, uh, and, and, and that's just going to be like a photo album. Like you would just share a regular photo album. Uh, and and then you would create those photo albums inside of that that photos application. It looks you know basically like rearranging a bunch of files in in the different albums. Like it's it's not complicated at all. Uh, it, it it's nothing fancy either, uh, but it it does the job uh, in and does it a little bit more efficiently now. Hopefully. Question for you on that photos app. I think it might be an add on app, but the identification i think it's like face identification or photo identification it might be an add-on i think i was under the impression it was built in but it might be third party it it probably is they didn't highlight it um basically i think it uses you know face recognition to recognize who's in what photos and you can kind of search by those photos well i know here you can manually tag photos uh, but yeah, that might be something interesting for you to bring up in the next episode. Yeah, to to see if that is indeed an a, a, a application, an application that can be installed. Yeah. Um, the next one is recommendations. This is probably my most hated application that comes bundled natively into Nextcloud. So this shows recommended files for quick access of files and folders with recent activity. Now we had gone yeah. over. Uh, I think in, you can disable the- it. We talked about it. Lo- last week i think we talked about it last week you can disable that and then i think there's one that's the other my other setting that i dislike is the default it just starts like notes almost it just starts you off with a cursor and i said why no i don't need this i'm uploading files not writing a story right now it's just next cloud stop yeah um, yeah so that is that is something that i actually didn't know how to disable for the longest time i just 
hadn't cared that much. And I was like, this stupid thing is really dumb. And it's across the top banner. And I didn't even see it in the bottom left corner of every single screen is the little settings where you can just go and unclick that check mark box. And, and uh, I never have to see it again. And that is just, you know, made my life so much easier. So, so I'm going to, I'm going to have to be doing that from now on. But uh, yeah, so that's, that's an easy one to turn off. And I would, I would recommend that be turned off unless for some reason you just love seeing everything that you have just completed. I mean, that's what it is. It's most recently, I mean, (laughs) the recommendation engine is basically what have you most recently touched. So (laughs) yeah. (laughs) Uh, The next application here is text. And this is collaborative document editing. Uh, so this is uh, simple text. This isn't Collabora, which would have like the... This isn't document, right? This cor- is like markdown files. Correct. This is raw text files. This is this is not a word processor collaborative editing suite. That is something that is available and something I think we should touch on. Um, but not something that is enabled by default this is this is simply raw text files um, but you can share and collaborate you know with whoever you want to and and I'm assuming you could do that on on a public share as well it, it, it seems to indicate here um, and all the files that you're writing are saved as markdown which is our favorite markup language uh, and they have you know more open source underneath the hood uh, that's that's powering this uh, so that's that's a really quick and easy way to do collaborative uh, document editing. Uh, but there are more refined platforms that if you're looking to do that, you may be more interested in. Like I said, such as Collabora. Um, and I think, I don't know if OnlyOffice powers that or if OnlyOffice is a separate implementation. Either way, I'm sure we're going to dive into that later. Uh, the last two I wanted to dive in here is the usage survey, uh, which sends anonymized data to Nextcloud to help us to improve Nextcloud. Uh, now, the instance uh, a- owner, the the application owner, the the admin, always has full control over the content sent to Nextcloud, and it can be disabled at any time. So that is actually, I want to dive into all the specs that you can see when we take a look at the settings about a given server. So we're going to, we're going to take a look at that, but there is anonymized data that by default, I believe is being sent to Nextcloud. Uh, so we've, we've talked about how uh, sending statistics back helps the overall development cycle and, and you know, how that, how that really works. So we're going to, I'm I'm just going to leave it there. Uh, I do have the documentation link so you can see what is all is being sent back and how it's anonymized, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but it is something that can be turned off in an instance. So if that's still something you're just not comfortable with, go ahead and, and turn it off. And that's why I wanted to make sure to highlight it to give you the option to do that. Um, and then the last one here, and like I said, this is just alphabetical order. So video player uh, is actually the last one on the page. And the video player is just a responsive video player, so you can watch MP3s, WebMs, or MP4s, WebMs, what, whatever. What AVIs uh, are all should all be viewable uh, with that built-in video player. So it's it's fairly standard. Uh, just another great feature that I would expect to be in there is in there. So nothing nothing really to expound about. Uh, Jack, before I move on, do you do you feel like I touched on all of the applications that I came in here? Is there some kind of glaring hole that I didn't uh, hit on? No, it doesn't look like it. Uh, the one thing I note is that a lot of these are JavaScript, which I guess makes sense because they're all part of that front end. Nothing, I guess, is touching that data on the back end. You know, you don't need PHP for a lot of this stuff. You just need, I guess, access to the files. Um, but I don't know. It's interesting because I just see a lot of them are, it looks like JavaScript based applications. So, well, and also what that allows us to do, which is something I think we should touch on as well is writing separate, completely separate applications for mobile use. And then using that to contact the server backend and interact with it like it was the front end application. Uh, so just another way that it, it makes itself more modular there. With that then, let's move on to settings. 
And this is just going to be a brief overview of the settings that were interesting to me on a vanilla install. Now, this is from the point of view of an administrator. So I'm going to go over two sections sections here. I'm going to go over the personal settings section, and I'm also going to go over the administrative settings section. So the, the personal settings section has several subsections that are available. Initially, it has uh, personal info, then security, activity, mobile and desktop, accessibility, sharing, flow, and privacy. So there's a ton of things in these subsections that you can go in and explore. I, I don't know. I guess I'm weird. And, and, and Jack, you're going to have to, to, to level set me on this. But when I do anything, when I spin up a new instance of an application, when I install a new OS on my phone when I, when yeah. I have anything, the first thing I do is go around and see just what am I able to tweak about this? Like I don't, I don't go to like use it or, you know, see how fast it is or how responsive it is. I want to see what are they allowing me to change in here? Like, am I, am, is that just me or, or do other people do that too? Uh, that's a good question. I honestly go through, no, I, you know what I go to? I go to what, what's third party that I can install. I, I don't know if that's on the same page or not. That is, yeah. I, I automatically jump to like, all right, what kind of cool features does, can I, it's not what's already here. It's what kind of cool features can I add on to what's already here? <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, that is. That's really, so I guess I go to plugins maybe. Yeah. yeah I, I kind of yeah. jump to plugins. How can I customize this? How can I throw it on? Whereas I go to, all right, what are they allowing me to do here? How can I, how can I tweak this? So, so for me, settings is actually very interesting. I, I put a lot of weight on, you know, what, what comes out of the box? What can I, what are they actually allowing me to do? You know, how can I make this my own? So there are a couple of recommendations going through just the personal section that I say, all right, here, here's uh, some of the cool things that they allow you to do. The first one is adding a profile picture. I know that doesn't seem like a lot, but then I start seeing my face everywhere and, and start associating this kind of ownership. And, and then, you know, when, when Jack sees a file that I've shared, you know, he's actually seen me as I'm sharing it to him. Exactly. So, so it's, it's one of those, those tweaks that I always make sure to do. I always make sure to, whenever I sign up for a new service, go into my settings once again and throw on a, a profile picture so I can kind of see where it shows up in my day-to-day -day workflow. Uh, the next is the activity. So we had talked about this activity application before, and here's where you get to start configuring it in the settings. And and for what it's worth, most of the applications, once you install them, will put in their new section under your personal settings here. So if you were to install a third-party application, it would pop up here and say third-party settings for this specific application. Uh, so the activity settings are able to change which activities generate notifications and how often they're sent. Now that goes hand in hand with how they're actually sent. So there are two options you have there. You can have them sent via the, the actual Nextcloud interface. Like it has a little alerts button on the top of it. And it says, you know, you have so many um, notifications uh, pending. Uh, of of that you've chosen to to indicate yeah um, or you can have them emailed out to you in a digest um, so I prefer twice a day to have my notifications emailed out to me uh, and that's almost on every kind of service so that's that's anything I use I want kind of like a, a morning digest and I want an evening digest uh, so that's that's the setting now I don't have a lot that Nextcloud generates for me because I don't do a lot besides uploading and downloading files that's just not stuff I want to be aware of. I'm, I'm probably already aware of. Uh, and this is going to be more so if I have a share out there that I'm expecting files to be uploaded onto, I want to be aware, I want to be notified when those files get uploaded. So that's, right. that's something that I would indicate that I would like to get an alert for. Uh, now, the setting does provide a way to sign up with your email provider and have that emailed out to you. Uh, so that would probably be the easiest way, just any kind of email provider, you're gonna search um, you know, how, to, how to sign up Nextcloud with, with email. And, and you know they're gonna, they're gonna walk you step-by-step step through that. Usually it's just gonna be an SMTP server address, 
maybe not even a port if you're lucky, then your username and password, and then it should do all the rest in the background for you. But this would this would get you set up with email notifications from Nextcloud if that's something you're you're interested in. At least that activity would show up every time you logged into Nextcloud. Uh, and then the last interesting thing here is the dark theme, which is in the accessibility accessibility subsection, and that is a native Nextcloud dark theme. So instead of having to enable dark reader on Nextcloud, you can enable their custom dark theme and have that be rendered instead. So that's always handy. Nice. Saves on CPU. Yeah. Moving on to the administration section of this. Uh, there there are a couple of global settings for the Nextcloud instance. Um, for the administrative settings for all of the applications. Uh, this list of settings is available to all administrators right underneath their personal settings. So the recommendations that I would have here, and, and there's a slew of them, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna touch on all of them, but under the support subsection, uh, there is a list of community support links, uh, specifically to their forums and to their chat. Uh, so if you have any questions, obviously if you're running an R Compose instance, you can always contact us and and we'd be around to to assist in the support of that. But more than likely, I mean, this is where we're going to, to take a look if, if we have questions, right? These, these are great resources. These are people who are dedicated round the clock to dealing with Nextcloud issues. These are people who really are passionate and who care about this. And, and they, have a, they have a great community around them. So I would, I would highly recommend at least checking those out if you never have previously. Uh, the next would be the basic settings, and this is where that email server setting comes into play. This is where you're able to set that to be able to send emails from your Nextcloud instance, like uh, and and not just for activity notifications, but also for like password resets, uh, which you can also send via email. So there's there's several things you can do, uh, and and that's always a good thing to have in your back back pocket uh, just to set up. Uh, just to have your next slide instance be able to send emails through your email provider. Next is the sharing administrative option. Now this enables or disables sharing globally on your Nextcloud instance. So you as an administrator are able to disallow any type of sharing if that's not something that you would like to be happening. I mean, you can you can simply say, hey guys, I, I, I don't want this to to be sharing. So let's go ahead and, and disable that. I don't want any shares going out. I, I want everything to say in-house. So let's go ahead and disable sharing across the entire instance. Uh, next is uh, theming. So in addition to your profile picture as an administrator, you can also set the name of your instance, the color, the logo, and the login image of your instance. This is just a way to personalize it. It makes it a little bit more fun, you know, a little bit more yours, a little bit more customized. Uh, next is the usage survey, and that's where you would enable or disable that usage survey that we were talking about that is sent to the Nextcloud developers. Uh, like I said, that is on by default. Uh, so you can choose to turn it off if you do so choose. And lastly is the system. Now I wish I, I wish I took a snapshot of this. It's pretty cool. It it shows a lot of the things about the underlying system. It shows the the operating system. It shows the disk space. Um, it shows the actual hardware down to like the CPU type. So like Jack, if you're wondering what our DigitalOcean CPU uh, our, our our processors are, yeah, it shows it shows you know. Uh, the the clock speed and it shows the processor type and all that so it's really cool to be able to go in there and, and and see that for something that's you know on a cloud and you can see well this is an actual real thing it's, it's actually running on it's actually running on this right <laughs> it's actually a server go figure so it's it, that was that was cool to see um, you can see uh, the network the shares and all the active users information as well uh, so just an overview of the system as a whole uh, it's it's a really good uh, way to to standardize what you're looking at and uh, and be able to get at a at a glance uh, what's going on with your instance um, maybe it's slow and and you see that your CPU is being hammered or something right you can you can start diagnosing bottlenecks from that point um, 
But that is all I have for applications, built-in applications and settings. Uh, so I, I, I think I could have, did a good job as, as far as you know what, what is available to you uh, right when your instance is deployed and ready. Right. This is this is what you're able to immediately log in and say, oh, let me start tweaking stuff. Let me start, you know, looking into how I want to set up my instance, how I want to customize it, how I want to make it mine. This is the way to make your instance unique to you. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jack, and he's going okay. to tell us how 